Hi, I'm Lori Wingate. I'm the Director of Evaluate. In this brief video, I'm going to give you an overview of what project evaluation is, why NSF requires ATE projects to be evaluated, how to begin planning for the evaluation of your project, and I'll wrap up by giving you some examples of the types of resources available from Evaluate. So what is project evaluation? The basic definition of evaluation is the determination of something's quality, value, or importance. When we talk about project evaluation, we're really talking about doing this systematically and with the support of evidence. To do this, first, we have to identify and clearly communicate what it is that will be evaluated. This can be done by framing important questions about a project's processes and outcomes. Then we gather data. And although many will stop there, we also need to interpret those data and actually answer the evaluation questions. And there's really no point in doing any of this if the information isn't going to be used, so it's critical to use the evaluation results for accountability to sponsors to improve our work and to plan next steps. And we can start this process over again as we venture into new initiatives. So why does NSF require ATE projects to be evaluated? Well, evaluation serves three main functions in this context. At the most basic level, evaluation enables a high degree of accountability. Individual grantees are held accountable for their use of federal resources, and the information helps NSF to be accountable to Congress and justify continued program support. Evaluation helps projects demonstrate the extent to which they are on track to deliver what they promised in their proposals and that they are using the grant funds appropriately. But even more importantly, evaluation supplies evidence about a project's outcomes and impacts, which helps those involved determine the extent to which NSF's investment is worthwhile. But perhaps the most important role of evaluation in a project is for improvement. Evaluation data often reveal ways a project can and should be improved to enhance results. It can also help projects to determine the which aspects of what they're doing are more or less successful so resources can be used efficiently to maximize outcomes. Now, how do you plan for the evaluation of your project? You may just be getting started thinking about your ATE projects, but it's not too early to start planning for the evaluation. In fact, that's my main advice, start early, as in right now. First, make sure you set aside adequate funds for evaluation efforts, including funds to pay an external evaluation consultant. This is a requirement for the ATE program. There must be a budget line for an external evaluator. The average expenditure on evaluation within the ATE program is 7%, but anywhere from 5 to 10% is appropriate. Unless prohibited by your college, find a professional evaluator to work with as you develop your proposal. Two places to look for an evaluator include the American Evaluation Association's Evaluator Directory and the ATE Evaluator Map at atecentral.net. Often the best way to find the right evaluator is through word of mouth, so be sure to ask your colleagues as well. There is no official credential or certification that allows a person to call him or herself an evaluator, so you'll want to be sure to look for someone who identifies professionally as an evaluator, has experience evaluating STEM education projects, has strong skills in social science research and education research, and knows the two-year college context. As soon as you've roughed out your project plan, create a logic model that depicts its main inputs, activities, outputs, and outcomes. This graphic depiction of your project's design serves as a check to make sure your project is well thought out and logical. It also makes a great foundation for beginning to plan an evaluation. Once you have these three elements in place, a budget line for evaluation, an evaluator, and a sound project design, you can begin creating a plan for the evaluation of your project. Finally, what can Evaluate do for you? Evaluate is the Evaluation Support Center for the ATE program. Our whole reason for existence is to help you do your evaluation work better in order to advance excellence in technician education. We mainly do this by providing free webinars, stocking our resource library with useful tools, curating a community blog, and collecting and reporting data about program activities and achievements. Our interactive webinars help bring evaluation to life through practical examples and demonstrations that demystify the evaluation process. We have a couple coming up in the near future, including small-scale evaluation, which is especially for individuals involved in small ATE projects. 
That's coming up soon on February 15th. Following that, we have a webinar about outcome evaluation on March 22nd. From our website, you may also access recordings, slides, and handouts from all of our past webinars. Our resource library is filled with cool stuff to help you with your evaluation work, like checklists, templates, and guides that you can put to use right away to shorten the evaluation learning curve and improve your evaluation work. One example is the evaluation planning checklist for NSF ATE proposals. If you're involved in preparing a proposal to the ATE program, you'll definitely want to download and use this resource. To help you with creating a logic model for your project, we have a logic model template, which includes question prompts and examples tailored to the ATE program. In our blog, you'll find stories and perspectives of STEM education evaluators, project leaders, grant specialists, and others. For example, this blog about changing a project's focus based on evaluation data was written by Asa Bradley, who was a MentorConnect participant and a small project principal investigator. Another example is by Leslie Goodyear, who is the president-elect of the American Evaluation Association and a former NSF program officer. She gives her advice for developing strong evaluation plans for NSF proposals. And by the way, we're always looking for new blog authors, so if you have some evaluation-related experiences or resources you'd like to share in a blog, please contact us. Last but not least, every year we conduct a survey of ATE project leaders and prepare various reports to describe the activities and achievements of the ATE program. This information can be used for developing proposals as well as for project evaluation. In addition to detailed reports, we have one-page data snapshots, such as this one about women in the ATE program. It shows the percentage of students who are female by disciplinary area within the program. To help you envision how you might use these data for your own purposes, we have a short video that demonstrates using our survey data for project evaluation purposes. Completing the annual ATE survey is an expectation of all ATE grantees as expressed in this quote from the ATE program solicitation. A PDF version of the survey is on the Evaluate website. You can review it to get a sense of the types of data all projects are expected to collect and report. So that's an overview of evaluation and evaluate.